Hey, you're freaking coming over here. Welcome back to more uh, Minish Cap. In the last part, we took on, or we didn't take on, but we um, got to the end of Minish Woods, and then we also found a bird hat that lets us shrink down to the size of the Minish. Anywho, um, I'm just going to explain something real quick. If you noticed in the last part, the commentary audio was, like, kind of bad quality. Like, um... Like, I guess the commentary wasn't that bad, but, like, the, uh, audio sounded, like, really, like, bad sounding, I guess. And I just couldn't really, like, stand to even, like, listen to it. Like, I don't know why, it just really bugged me to listen to it. And also, the commentary wasn't really that good for the next few parts, so, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and re-record everything. So, I mean, it's better for all of us, because it would've bugged me so much had I kept that original, you know, audio. Anywho, now we're, I guess we're in Minish Village. Let's go up here and see what's up. Up. Oh, why? Okay, never mind. Hmm, it appears we have found the Minish Village. Yes, quite, quite indeed. And I'm assuming these are the Minish. Piki Picori. Rippy Rippico Picori. Pikiko Pico Rippico. I gather it's been quite some time since I last saw a human. What's that? You didn't understand what they were saying just now? Oh yes, that was the language of the Minish. It's a little different from the dialect I am most familiar with. I'm afraid I didn't catch most of what they said myself. But perhaps there is someone here who understands their language. We should look around. Let's do it. Uh, no, no. Wait a sec, actually, can you cut these? Oh, cool. I didn't even know that. Huh. You learn something new every single day. But yeah, I'm hoping that the commentary for these next few parts will, you know, be a little bit better. Because, um, I mean, the commentary in, like, the first... Because I reported all the way up to the end of the first dungeon, and the commentary really wasn't that bad. But, it could do better. Hmm, I've never seen an outfit like that before. Are you a human? Oh my, it's been quite some time since any humans came here. My name is Fistari, I watch the Abbey. As well as the shrine to the north. You seem to be having quite some trouble with our language, don't you? You could use a job but not to allow you to understand our tongue. You should be able to find one in the barrel house just south of here. Okay. I wish I wish you could actually do that, like um you could actually just like eat some sort of food and understand a language suddenly. That would make I mean Spanish class I wouldn't even need to take. <sighs> anyway, I guess this is the barrel house he was talking about. Let's see what's up. No oh dear. How are we ever gonna push the block? This thing's moving, and like, it looks like it's- is this thing alive? Cause I don't really want to eat a live nut. Okay, Q, this must be the jabber nut Fistar told you about. Yeah, 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 we know, we're gonna eat it. Now we can understand the Minish. Let's test out our new foreign speaking abilities. So you've eaten the jabber nut, and now you can understand us. The elder said the humans can no longer see us as they once could. It's amazing that you can see us. I'll say it is. Oh, wait. Anywho, um, I guess let's just go ahead and head back to that dude that was in the gigantic crystal house. Let's go see what he's doing. What's up? So you've eaten the job, and not now you can understand us. Sorry, but I know a little about swords. I'm sure the elder can help you. Wait, so this isn't the elder? Like the guy living in the giant house made of like crystals or whatever that is? Maybe just some broken glass that they found and. Since they're small, it wasn't really that big of an ordeal to, you know, make it to a roof, but, you know, I can see, you know, they could have some, some major wounds from the, just glasses sharp. Anyway, this is actually the Elder. Oh, you speak our language, it's been quite some time. Yeah, we know, I've already heard this whole speech. Thank you for your offer, but we have no time to relax. My name is Aslo. This child is cute, we need to break a curse that has been cast on the curse of my room. I don't know, why do I keep on switching voices? Anywho, um, right now he's explaining that there are four elements and they are crystalline forms of... Crap, I missed the last part. Only by infusing the blade with these energies can a new blade be reforged. Alright, they're crystalline, crystallized forms of energies. Okay, you're giving me your map. I can mark where these elements can be found. Oh, hey, look. One's, one's in the Minish Woods. That's convenient. The Earth element can be found in the shrine to the north of Fistari's Abbey. Speak with Fistari. He will show you the path to the shrine's entrance. Go with caution. Evil creatures have lately made their home in our shrine. Turn to me at once after you have found the Earth Element. Okay. They kind of put a lot of trust in little kids, like... Um... 
I mean, just in Link, they're putting kind of a lot of trust in him. I mean, hang on, let me just... You wish you go to the Stron very well this way. <laughs> vile beasts. I am no... Or vile be... Vile beasts are no match for me. But seriously, you think that like they would be able to find this place? I mean, they're searching for it. And, I mean, they... I mean, it says that they would take, like, day... Or, like, they, they would look for days and they can even find, like, one minute. She took us, like, five seconds. Because, I mean, you know, we just kind of went to the village. I mean, I get that, you know, they only appear to children, but still, it's... I mean, you'd think you'd be able to find one just going to that village. And you know, like I was saying, they kind of put, like, a lot of trust in a little kid just to come here and, like... I mean, Link's probably, what, like, 13, 14 years old? They just expect him to come in here and, like, kill all these monsters. Anywho, kill those little slug guys, and then... Uh, press on those dealios. Foshilios, those little switches. And then you get a small key. Which, you know, you can use to open locked doors. Uh, I just explained that, Ezlo, but thank you for your input anyway. Ugh. And those slug enemies also fall from the sky, so just kind of watch out for them. They're not really that big of a threat. Yeah, I, I know I can pull it. They don't really put a lot of trust in the character. Or, I, not the character, in the player to be able to figure out to pull the switch. But the characters in the game put a lot of trust in Link to be able to save the whole, like, universe from dying. Just like in Link to the Bass, we can throw pots at stuff and kill it. So that's always cool. Ooh, a blue rupee. That's worth five. Green ones are worth one. Bleh. I cannot talk today for crying out loud. And red... Blue ones are worth five. Anywho, go ahead and light that torch, and then it loosens up the barrel a little bit by destroying some nature. Just like BP. Destroying some nature. <sighs> Okay, so now if you head over here, you're confronted with yet another puzzle. Just push that block right there, really. I mean, nothing a three-year-old couldn't figure out by themselves. Kind of obvious, I guess. And this is one of the first times I'm like actually recording like more than one episode at a time. Like, right now I'm probably going to record like three episodes. This is like the first... Well, I mean, I... Wait. No. Whoa, hell, my... Yeah. Hey, be careful, my lad. The barrel just moved. No, oh, oh, oh. no, I have an accent. Oh, 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 oh. It's really not a good accent either. Why? No, never mind. I'm not even gonna ask myself questions about stuff that I know, don't know, or something. Anywho, here's another little launch mushroom. Let's go ahead and grab it and cannon. Okay, way to make me look like an idiot. I was gonna say cannonball. Yeah. All those fun memories at the swimming pool all finally flooded back to me. So we need to do something to hold down this switch. Well, we can push this pot. Or we could pick it up and put it down, but I think he can't put things down. He can only... <sighs> Water! He can only pick them up and throw them. That enemy, like, the flying enemy kind of looks like the dude from... Like, this one enemy from Pikmin. Um... Uh, shut up, Ezlo. I'll explain it. I'll take the wheel from here. Um, like there was one guy in Pikmin who would like it was like this flying dude that would come around and like steal your Pikmin, and it was really annoying. I don't really remember much from Pikmin though. I played it a long time ago, but like I never actually beat it because I'm lazy. And we just got a new small key in case you didn't notice that. If you didn't, then just just stop. Drop it, boogie. And I still don't know what I'm talking about. Anywho, now if we launch all the way over here... Come on, you stupid mushroom! Ah! There we go! Let's see, what can we get in these pots? I'm just gonna be money grinding for a little bit, like... I'll just get money whenever I can. Stuff. So. Because, um, we're getting an item pretty soon that, you know, we kind of want... Or not, uh, like, we're gonna buy something pretty soon that, you know, is... Cost a little bit of money, like, not that much, really, but more than you'll probably have. 
And now you go up here and you can unlock this door. And go inside. I hate water. I mean, in real life it's it's the cat's pajamas, but in this game it's not the cat's pajamas at all. It's like the bees pajamas. Something. I don't know. I don't like bees though. They scare me a lot. And it's kinda like it's it's a little legitimate fear, sort of, for me, because um I'm actually like allergic to them. And they can fly and like terrorize little children and me. 